read carefully what the choice of the election is. I mean, you heard her say she moved here when she was a young girl, she grew up here, she led you in the OHIO. <laughs> she worked for a big corporation for 17 years. She helped them to digitalize their business. And she and a group of her co-workers, like so many people that work for big corporations, thought they were working hard, contributing to the profits of the company and not getting a fair deal. So she had the guts with five others to go out and start their own small business. That is the future of America. You should not be pessimistic. I want to thank my great friend, Governor Nick Scalettes, for being here and for what he's done. Uh, both as governor and a very distinguished ambassador to India when I was president, where he and his wife, Jacqueline, who's here with him, did a fabulous job for the United States representing us in a country that we had been estranged from for many years, literally for decades. Biggest democracy in the world had cold relationships with America. I decided to fix it. He was the fixer. She was the fixer. They did a great job. And we're in better shape in that part of the world today because of our strong partnership with India. So I thank you. Another person is in this audience and the lights are bright, so I can't see. But my first national treasurer, Mary Ellen Rithrow, is here. Where are you? Oh, yes, she is. Thank you. Mary Ellen got to put her signature on the dollar bill back when we wound up running surpluses when I was there. So I don't <laughs> I want to thank Ed Hilby, the County Democratic Chair of our County, Roger Van Sickle, the Vice Chair of Franklin. I want to thank the young people who spoke on Hillary's behalf before we came up here. Alex and Brian, thank you. Janet Brennan, the candidate for the legislature, thank you. The mayor of Marion, Ohio, Scott Scherzer, is here, thank you. Um, <laughs> Look, we're getting down to the end of this election, and sometimes I don't know whether I'm in the real world or an alternative universe, but I want to tell you, I'll tell you what I think it's about. It's about you and your kids and your grandkids and what kind of America we're going to live in and what kind of America we're going to leave behind. I simply do not believe the bleak picture of our future that Hillary's opponent has painted. I do believe we have some serious problems. I believe that we have been victimized by economics and politics that don't reward people to work well enough, that don't pick up the slack in areas that have been left out and left behind. behind. Some of them are going to give it back to you. <laughs> and that's what you've got to say. Do we have problems? Yeah. Is it a terrible tragedy that the life expectancy of working class white men in this country is going down because in so many areas they get up every day and they don't think they can make a better future? Because we haven't done a good enough job of helping them get on a pathway to that future? Absolutely. Is it wrong that for the first seven years after the crash, most people never got a pay raise? Last year was the first year when 
the bottom 80% of us led the way in pay increases, the biggest in decades. But what you got to decide is what you're going to do about it. And here's what I want to say. The first choice is, do you want to go back to trickle-down economics? No! Because you can say you're anti-establishment, but the worst thing the political establishment did to America that we tried to reverse was trickle-down economics. Right? Give all the benefit to people at the top and somehow it will help them. Now we have now seen 36 years of this battle. The trickle-down crowd had the White House for 20 years. The invest and grow the economy from the middle out and the bottom up had it for 16 years. So what's the job score? I mean, I, that's the world I live in. I spent half my life trying to help people find a job, start a business, raise their income, raise their kids, educate them, get out oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. We've been told the government's the enemy, let's leave the government out of it. Just what's the private job score? In their 20 years, 15.8 million jobs. In our 16 years, 31.9 million jobs. In four fewer years. And that blows President Obama up with the almost three million jobs we lost in his first couple of years in office because the crash occurred four, minutes, four months before he took the oath. So I'll tell you one thing, 10 years from now, people will look back on his management of the economy and he'll get a lot better marks for it. We just had our 79th straight month of job growth. Even when I was president, it was the only time in 50 years where we all grew together, nobody was mad at anybody else. We never had 79 months where there were more jobs every month than there were the month before. So I believe we are very close to being able to grow together again. And I believe the major issue for you in this election is how do we get more jobs, a fair share, of the corporate profits that are earned in America for the people who earn them. How do we get more upward mobility so nobody at any age has to get up in the morning and look in the mirror and think they cannot change the future for themselves and their children?